Uh, design an algorithm to encode a list of strings to a single string. The encoded string should be decoded back. Cool, right? So encoding is pretty straightforward. So if we go here and we want to like, we have like some list of strings or whatever, and we want to like encode them. Encoding just means that you change the form of it, right? Like the, the hardcore part of encoding is like, you've got like Z, X or whatever, like T, like um, ampersand, like 27 or something. And then like the original one was like, hello. But then you have like some set of rules where you can say like, take this gibberish and then you can like put it back into this. The only real way is you have like some kind of form of like rules. So uh, the most common, I think, the most common is that you are the most like easy to understand is like you have like a rule where you have like hello or we have some rule we call it like hello and then we just like say oh well everything is going to be like a letter after that and so like i don't know what actually comes after h is it g but you basically just put it down to where like everything is just one letter in the alphabet like below it um and i don't i really don't know the alphabet like that but but let's say it's like like this and then when you want to decode back you just pull this thing out and you bump everything up that is one way that's like a very simple encoding algorithm the what does this look like is that you go from h right you find like the the value of it the numerical value of it which would be like you know what letter is it in the alphabet it might be like 15 or something and then here you just make it a 16 and yeah you could even convert these to just completely pure numbers if you wanted but it's really up to you and that is how you solve this problem like in a simple way if you want like a more complex encoding algorithm right i'm sure there's a ton of them because we have like 100 uh, not 100 years yet, but maybe 40 years, 50 years doing all this kind of computer stuff. I've been meaning to do Neat code now, 150 now for six months, only 60 through 150. I just do dailies and contests. I find that more engaging and gamified. Yeah, I think it is too, for sure. Um, it's definitely worth doing finishing this list though, because he kind of goes down and there's some really complex things towards the bottom, towards the bottom end of this, this roadmap slash tree. Cool. All right. Now, I don't know if I really want to use this thing. I mean, I really don't want to like, I think leak code CA might be a thing. Leak code CA encode strings. I think this is a website where they might have it to where I don't have to log in. In Python, this is going to look like the code is going to look like going for every single word for word in words or in STRS. Uh, we're going to go through here and do, I'm surprised he has Vim mode in here. It's kind of base. Do answers and then we'll do uh, encoded word. Is it, no, I think for CH in word. New ch is just like whatever the the numerical value of that word is plus one and then we'll add a new word dot append and then we'll just answer dot append and it's going to be a string so we'll do like the dot join like that and then we'll do the same thing for decode so we have like some string and we just go like oh well for for ch in string uh, new like ch or whatever it is like whatever like the numerical value of that is minus one uh, also, I didn't convert this back into a character, actually. I think you convert numerical into character like that. Uh, we'll go through that and then take this of our answer. And then we'll just say like new ch dot, what is this, answer dot append? New ch, I guess convert it. And then at the end, we just do dot return dot join answer. And this will be a decoded. Oh, wait, but we want it as an entire string into a single string. Oh, that's kind of weird. Hmm. Okay, because it's an entire string, we need separators basically at every layer. So for every word, we can add in a separator. It's like a bar or something. And maybe like if ch is equal to bar, then I guess answer.append or something. Uh, I guess close out this problem by just going over a uh, the code like one more time. We're going to go have like our answer. We're going to store every single word. And or we're going to go through every word, create a new word. That new word is going to just be bumped up by one, whatever like it is as ASCII or whatever. Uh, the new word is going to have the the word appended. What is this? Oh, yeah, as a character. Um, and then once we build that new word out, we're just going to stick it in. And that's going to be our encoding. We're going to have a list of those. And I think this code works where you can just join the list and it will form everything as a string. If it doesn't, then you just kind of modify this, I think, to just add like a plus equals one. So it'd be like uh, answer like plus equals like this new word or whatever, like plus like a uh, like this. I just hate doing this because it, strings aren't mutable. So I would prefer not to do that. But, but you could do that. We really want to, if this fails, and then for the decoding, we're just going to take the answer, go through every single character. If we ever see a separator, then we get, we know we need to start adding it to the new answer. And every time we add a character, it's like here, every time we add a new character, we're just going to decrement it for all the other ones. And then just add it into the new word, add that character into the new word. And that's going to be that. And I think we just need to define new word 
and this works. I believe it works at least. It's like 99% of the way there. It's not for this. So that's the strings, encode and decode. We'll go over to the next one. Group anagrams. We're given a string and we want to group together right again. This is like one of my first, one of my first um, programming problems or one of my first interview problems. But so we want to group the anagrams together. So we want everything that has like the same letters to be in like the same group. There's two ways of doing this where if you want to like get them to group together, you can one, we still have like this, okay, I guess a couple of things to keep in mind. One, we have the same thing where we want everything to be that has the same letters to be in the same group. Um, but this is kind of weird because we want to group all of them together and we, we have other things. But like we just want them to have the same letters the same number of times. I don't, I guess I don't know like how like the intuition of it is, but it's just that like we want to count like everything, get all of their, like their occurrences. So for like E, right, like E, A, T, in this case would be like E is one. A is one. Like this is a critical part of this. We have to do this. And then that is what eight, eight. So then that's going to be like E is one, A is one, T is one, right? Like we have to do this. And this is like a very big part of the problem is understanding this. And then now it's like, okay, well, how can we group these together? How do we make sure that these are like in the same group? So like, okay, like now how do we group these together? Right? So like we can say like, oh, well, these two are the same, but how do we know that these are like grouped together? And huh, for that question, I don't know if this the constraints of this one are low enough. They aren't really low enough to where you can just go over them. I usually honestly don't. I would probably think about that. I do know that you sort them. Like so, sorting them is like another thing that you can do. So like there is like this way, and then there's also like the sorting way where you just sort everything. So you say like A E T, and then everything that's in A E T um, has like eat right, and then like eight. Yeah, like this is probably actually one of those problems where I would have to think about it, but like. I know that you can solve this by sorting. I know you can solve it in like doing some kind of idea like this. And then at this point, I would have to actually think about like, how would I even do it? Let's see here. If you sorted everything, you would get the ones that are similar. You could just sort them and put the ones that are like, and also have like um, the ones that have like the same, you could have the, the, the sorted original, the sorted version. So you got to put everything here. So you could say like, oh, well, EAT, and then we modify it to, and then we do like eight. And then we also have EAT. So we have like two versions of it. And then we go through all of these, right? So we do these for like all of them. And then we go through and we're like, okay, well, everything that has like eight, we're just going to map it to like its its original one, essentially. Uh, this would give you it. And then at the end, you just iterate over all of the, the values and put those into the this map. That is a solution that works, but I think I might be missing something like for the second solution, because there, there are two ways. There's a space way where you just only purely do it by sorting and you can save space. And then there's a solution where you have the hash map that's like O of n space. This is the type of question that you apply reverse engineering. I need, I know that I need a raise. I can think about hash tables. So each value is in a hash table. A primitive of log x log x is x squared to log x. So I would think with that information, we can give a window for the sum k log k and both of the bounds would be n squared log n. So I believe this would prove that the sum is okay. Yeah, I don't know too much about math. I think your background is math, I think. I'm not really sure what you do actually, um, Solaris. Okay, cool. I want to go over the sorting solution though. How do you do that? Sort them. I think you just have to go over every character actually. Just like, I think it's that you sort every character, like for word in STRS. No, I don't know it actually. Anyways, I'm gonna, I'll code that up the solution. Although it kind of sucks that I can't get it with, I don't remember the sorting one, but we're gonna do this where we sort every word and we're gonna kind of like combine them. So AET, and we're gonna store that into a, a map. We're going to store 8TE in a map and we're going to put eat there. We're going to put 8 there or whatever. This is actually going to be AET, but because it's sorted. Um, we're going to put all those there and then we're going to go over all the values and just pop them in. That's what we're going to do. So for word and words, sorted, like sorted word is equal to sorted word. And then we'll say like, you know, like map at sorted word dot append. This is God bless Python, man, again. Map equals default stick with a list. And so now we can just do this. And now that we have this, we can just return a map. Uh, dot values just like that and this would have been a good solution i believe to my interview but what can you do so here uh, we sorted the word this should actually be hashable it shouldn't be a list why is it a list it should be a string this should be a string and strings are hashable. this works right like now this would have been the thing if i coded this up just like now in like i guess you know five minutes or whatever this would have been a pass on my interview and i would have had a nice internship but because i did not do any leak code or know any of this stuff, I did not get it. But hey, live and learn, as we say, get your problems up. That said, yeah, this works. Again, we're just kind of like sorting them. 
and then just keeping track of them and then just going over these values. Now, it's very nice to do in Python and very fast to do, which is why I prefer using it for interviews. But but yeah, that's this one. There's another sorting solution again, though, that I mentioned, but I don't remember it if we want to improve time complexity. So there will always be a list, I think. All right, so we got a group anagrams. This was a, not a bad problem. I'm pretty sure you can just like sort everything. Hmm, no, you, I think you, you have to go, but when you sort, it's like in login or something. I don't remember. We're initialize, we initialize a map. We go through every single word. We sort every single word. And then now that they're all in sorted order, they're all gonna have like the same structure if they're in the same family. And we can just put those into a map and just add like the original formation of that word. And then we can just go over the values of like every key that's in that map. And that's gonna be our answer. And like, you know, visually what this looks like is we have like some letters, right? Um, eat, T, tan. We have eat, T, tan. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna say, oh, well, if we sort them, like we can, these are all probably all gonna be the same structure. Like what is this? What are all these things sorted? What do they look like? Okay, well, this one is A, E, T. This one is A, E, T. This one is A, uh, N, T. Am I crazy? M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, yeah. Um, so now we know these are all sorted. Oh, well, okay, well, these are the group the same. These are, this is not grouped the same. And so if we sort them, we can actually just pop them in to like some kind of collection or some kind of group. In this case, this is the AET group. And then they're all going to go into there. And then this one's going to be like, you know, into like an ANT group. And then at the very end, we take this and then we just go over these. So it's like a hash map problem where you're kind of just playing around with, with stuff, playing around with like it and then like structuring it into some order where you can get them. But yeah. One thing you can do to improve space complexity would be storing keys and values as indices in the array instead of strings and then reconstruct the solution. You still have to construct the solution with the string, so you wouldn't change the O space. You see, this is the stuff I usually don't notice. Oh, it's just practice. It's a lot of stuff you just practice, right? Like the the um the core part of this problem is it's like anagrams. And so it's a lot of this the basis of this kind of solution comes from the fact, oh, it's anagrams. Oh, anagrams are rearranging letters. Oh, well, that must mean that the letters have the same like you have to have the same amount of letters this is like a an observation that when you rearrange letters like then they have to have the same letters and then it's like oh well if they have to have the same letters what things can we do to kind of like group them together and just sorting is like one of those things um we're like if you think about like what other ways can we do you could you probably would eventually if you spent like maybe 30 minutes you would realize okay maybe you can do sorting and then it's like okay well how do i do sorting to get to here especially if, if um if you had just solved this one this valid anagrams one where another solution to this one is you just sort them both. Like it comes down from looking at the solution to these, every, all these things are building on themselves where an anagram is actually just a sorted version of it. Like that's just the observation. And now you can start playing around with that for future anagram problems. Anytime something says anagram, you can think maybe I should sort or maybe I should do something like this. So yeah, that's, that's this problem. This is a group anagrams. This is how I would kind of structure it. It's just that like you understand anagrams and like what you can do, which also comes from looking at valid anagrams and the possibilities that you can do for that. All right, what's next on the list? Oh, wait, no, I didn't do it in C++. We had to do this in C++. So grind is the answer. Yeah, most likely. Uh, unordered map. I think can I, like it should be able to hash strings. How do you store like a vector? How to initialize unordered map? Like, I think is it just vector? And then you pop another one in and you're like, it's a vector and then it's like a string like that. You just call it like a map and then you go through everything. Zero I less than STRS dot size. I plus plus and then okay shoot where, where was it where am I going with this how do we do C plus plus oh yeah so like I want to take word and I guess it's a string word and then we're gonna set equal to strs at i and then we'll take word uh, given two strings s and t return true if t is an anagram 24 given two strings s and t return true if it's an anagram of s and return false otherwise anagram is a phrase word or phrase by rearranging letters a different word or phrase typically using Original characters at least once. This was like my first interview problem. No, actually it wasn't. But this is similar to my first interview problem. But to solve this problem, right, we just want to, like, one, you have to decompose what is an anagram. It's formed by rearranging the letters. Okay, what does that mean? That means that all the letters are the same. Okay, cool. So we know all the letters are the same. This is a big step forward. Now we can use that idea that all the letters have to match this. We can use a something that basically count all the letters and just compare and see if they're the same. So this is, right, like, like there are containers, especially too for letters, like you can actually have this as arrays. A uh, hash map makes more sense. I mean, it just expands kind of gradually. 
but we can see like, oh, how many times does A occur? Oh, it occurs twice. Oh, how many times does B occur? Oh, it occurs once, right? For like, let's say A, B, and let's say it's like A, A, B, like are these anagrams? Well, we just compare them. A is two, B is two. So uh, or B is one. Cool, right? So we just compare these. And this is like this problem, you really need to know what an anagram is and just recognize that these are the same letters in order to do them. Yeah, so just a hash. So we can hash these. You don't have to because these are actually letters and letters can be represented as integers. So, you know, you can have A is zero, B, B is one or whatever, um, but that's, you know, not needed at all. We can just use hash and then just do that. Now, cool things too, some Python tricks you guys didn't know. So you can use counters. Again, I just did this in the last problem. I used a counter and then you can compare them and that's like the answer. Um, as opposed to doing this process of let's go through and create everything into a hash map. Okay, here, 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 right? Like going through, uh, we can just, just count them and then just compare them. Look how amazing Python is. So that's that. Um, I'm going to try to code this in C++ too. So we're doing product over XXL. Uh, this is like a classic problem from the neat code list and going over the solution for it. So we want to create like, we have like given some array, we want to create the the finishing array, like to have like all the sum of all the numbers except for that one number. So for like 24, because two times three times four is 24. And then we want uh, 12 because one times three and four is 12 and then so on. And the solution for this is that we can use a prefix suffix array. Now, this is like a pretty important concept, I think for algorithms this is why like this problem is on here, is on this list. And essentially what you can do is you can create a like not a prefix sum, but a prefix product, I guess. And you multiply everything out. So one, one times two, one times two times three, one times three, two times three and four, right? And you get the, this kind of thing. And then you do the same thing backwards. So four, four times three, et cetera. And this lets you to kind of isolate the, the product that you're trying to like generate. So for two, right, uh, we just start that everything was like this, this, all of this column, I guess, has like to the two. And so we can just go one before it and that'll be it. And then one after it. And that'll get you everything that's after it. And then the same thing for the three, where we want to remove the three. Okay, well, let's just do it here and then here. And the same thing for four, where we want the four, we just get all this one. And then we're at the end, so we don't do anything there. And this will give us the, allow us to get this in like O of N. So we only have to just iterate over this these prefix and suffixes at every single point. And all we're doing is just prefix I minus one, and then suffix I plus one if it's in range. So, and then the code for that is gonna look something like a prefix. There's also another one too, like, you know, they kind of said here, which is a follow-up. You do this in O of one extra space, which I've never actually done before, but we'll just stick to this, the actual problem that, you know, most people probably wouldn't be able to solve. So we'll go through the numbers for num in, right? So we get one, two, six, four, 24, and then we get one, two, six, 24. So here we go, one, two, six, four, and we get four, 12, 24, 24. So this will, this is perfect. And then now we can do is just go over one more time and then we'll have our answer. It's like this. And then the answer is going to equal the prefix at I minus one times the suffix at I plus one and answer out of pen value. The only thing is we just need to check the bounds. So like if I is zero, then like something else happens. So then it's like value is equal to prefix or just suffix at, I guess at minus I and then this one's probably like, I don't know, actually. I, if I is equal to length of nums minus one, then it's just value is equal to prefix. And I minus one, it's just like else. So go here, go here. And then for the, for this, this is not going to work. This I plus one thing, we need to go for the last element in it, which I could just fix here. And instead of you just fill it from the back, or what I do is I reverse it like here. And then I didn't even um, return the answer properly. And yeah, so this works, works, works. And I believe this is fine. So we go ahead and submit and it is not fine. We get 17 out of 24 cases. Our output is incorrect. Yeah, maybe it's this negative eight or negative I. I don't know why I did that. It's, um, it'll be negative one, not negative I. Negative zero doesn't mean anything. No, like if I is zero, oh, it's just suffix at zero. And then this one is probably just I. Okay, well, yeah, anyways, that's that. Uh, very slow runtime, probably because of these reverses that I'm doing, but I think it's like the general idea. So we went through it again, right? We create a, a prefix and a prefix, prefix and a suffix, um, fill it up and then fill this one up, but we're reversing this time going from the back and then reverse this again. I think this is actually, unne this is, is unnecessary. You don't need to do this, but like, because of the way I structured this, I filled it here. I just reverse it. And then 
then we just compute them based off that um, diagram that was earlier. If it's zero, we only want the suffix. If it's the end, we only want the prefix. We just go through and then add the value every time and return our answer. Okay, so valid parentheses, I solved this problem uh, November 2023. Last, uh, given a string S containing characters, uh, determine if the string input is valid. It's valid if the open brackets and they're closed, that the open brackets are closed by the same type. Open brackets must be closed in the correct order. Every closed bracket has a corresponding open bracket of the same type. So like here, we've got like an open and a close of the same type. Open, close, same type, same type, open, close, open, close. Open, close, incorrect types. Not good, so we return false. Uh, and I guess it doesn't even talk about this either, but like, you know, something like this, I think also is bad. So if it were like this, this, but then we like do this, this is bad because they're incorrect types. Just, that's my knowledge. But this one's yeah, easy stack problem. If you don't know what a stack is, it lets you, it keeps track of elements in the order that, not really the order they're answered. I mean, I guess it is. So, so if you add one, two, three, you can actually just remove this element in like O of one um, instantly. Right. And normally in like a, if you had like a linked list or something, or I guess not a linked list, but if you just had like some kind of array of like numbers, normally what happens if you want to like remove the element, you have to do it slower. Um, because like removing it is like kind of weird. I don't know. I feel like in most cases it's not, but like in a, if you're doing like C plus plus and you have an array and you want to remove that element, then it gets really difficult because you basically have to like make a new one to remove it. But anyways, with a stack, you can actually remove it very quickly. So in like O of one for this problem, we can just go through. And instead of like constantly, I don't even know what the brute force solution would look like for this, but like instead of like going through every single time and like scanning and then removing very slowly, we can just remove it once. So we can keep track of everything that we add. Uh, so like open, 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 right? Just make sure that we're always adding opens here. Make sure we always add opens. And then when we see a close, we pop. So we kill it. And then we pop and then pop. And then if we see a close and our stack is empty, then we know we need to return false. Or if we see one that has a wrong mismatch. The idea for this is that we're going to have like four ch n or we'll have our stack and then we'll do four ch n s and then we probably want like the thing like this. So we want to make like what the corresponding match would be. I think I'll finish typing that, but then we'll say like if ch n closes, uh, if not stack or I don't know, like the, the pair at like ch is not equal to stack at negative one is not equal to the top of the stack then we just return false and okay they return false if chn opens then we'll just add it to the stack we'll add the open to the stack and then if all of those none of those like bad things happen then we just return true and for this we just need to define closes as like honestly you could hash it i don't even know if it would matter for this problem but i really don't know how do you do like is it like just set and then you can just do set of like open or wait, hold on, I, I got it. Like this, this, but close, close, close. Like that, then you convert that into a set. That's what you do. And then for the opens, you can do something similar. Where it's like here, here, like that. And then I wanna do like pairs also, but we're just like an open connects to like a close. And then a like open connects to a close and open. This is probably like the hardest thing of this problem is like writing out all this stupid stuff. But cool. So like now when we see the, uh, oh man, I reversed them. Big rip. Cool. Yeah. So create these things here. And now that we have like the closes things, we can just check, is it in closes? And then if the stack, um, if the pair is like the same and return it untrue, I think it's, it's fine. And we just kill it pairs. So yeah, this is this and, uh, okay. I messed it up. Uh, it's also we need to check, make sure that the stack is empty. That means that everything was closed. So if length of stack, why that looks so ugly compared to C++, you get used to it. The like the thing that I love over Python is that like when I'm coding in C++ is the fact that I have to type out so much stuff. How do you check if something's in a set in C++? It is like so verbose, so verbose. You have to type in so many words just to like come up with it. So yeah, I, you know, I like being able to just type things fast. Um, although, like I said, I'm, I'm going to be doing both, but I'm going to be coding in both so that I can actually, I guess, have a more balanced opinion. So if the length of stack is greater than, or like if, if stack has elements in it, then we can just return false. And that's the case that I missed, I believe. Okay, it is not the case that I missed. Open. Oh, because I'm never popping? Bro, how did I mess up all this stuff? It's kind of cringe. Kind of cringe. All right, there we go. 
it was stack solution. Um, it also probably runs faster because I'm using sets for this, like checks. Although I don't think you need to do that. But yeah, cool. So that's this problem. A nice elite code, easy. We'll mark it off. We get min, min stack for the polis notation and all that. Uh, so we'll go here to a min stack. And not this, but this little link. Valid Sudoku. Determine if a 9 by 9 valid Sudoku board is valid. Only filled cells need to be validated according to following rules. Each row must have these digits without repetition. Each column must contain the digits 1 through 9 without repetition. And then each of the 3 by 3 sub boxes must contain the digits 1 through 9 without repetition. A Sudoku board, partially filled, could be valid, but not necessarily solvable. Only the filled cells need to be validated. And we just return true or false, I believe, if it's good or not. So this one, uh, like the, obviously, or maybe not obviously, but like this without repetition type of thing, like we can just use a hash to confirm it in O of one, as opposed to like checking, you know, every single time. And so like we can do go row by row and just use a hash, like a set to just check, like, hey, have we seen this number before? And if we have, then it's not valid, like immediately. Uh, same for the columns, right? And so now we're just missing one condition, which is the three by three sub boxes of the grid. And um, for the three by three sub grids, we kind of have to use like this mathematical formula. I don't remember it exactly for, you know, doing that, but let's see like sub formula or whatever. I think it's something like, like row mod, it's like row mod, or it's like the position that we're at mod, like the row length, which in this case, I think is three plus the column, like mod, like the column length or something. It's like something like this, but this is, will let you generate something for when you have like zero, zero, well, zero, zero now maps to like zero and then like a zero, two, like here or here, I guess this three, right. Would map to like a one, but it's a, the idea that you can take like a two dimensional, two dimensional coordinates and kind of map them onto like a one dimensional. Um, and then you could, we could plug this into if you want to look at the math, but I believe it's what three and then what's well, so zero would be zero here. And then this one would be what zero, one, two, three, and it would be zero, one, two, three, three mod the column length, which is nine. I don't think that's right. Maybe it's divided by three or something. Cause then that would be three, that'd be four divided by three, which is like one. No, maybe it's this divided by three. Yeah. I don't know. Like th like three mod, don't know. I don't know what the formula is. I would have to like maybe look that up. Okay, so we'll go through here and then we're gonna have the rows, the columns, and then uh, we'll just go through every single row and every single column of this grid and then store them and just check to see like if we've like repeated essentially. I believe that's actually, and we can do those both at the same time. And actually let's call this n, n is equal to nine. And then for j in range, n here like this then we'll just check oh if or like number is equal to like board at i at j num in rows is it rows at i leave then we return false and then like if num in columns at j then we return false and then if not then we return true and then here's like the subgrid one which i don't have yet and then here we need to convert this so this will be a set uh for underscore in range like in same for the columns cool then this one, yeah, the subgrids. It's like if I don't even know, like, is it uh, index? It's like i mod three plus j mod three. So everything should be constantly put into a three by three. This isn't the right, but then it would be like if if um, subs like subgrid at index uh, return. It'd be like num in like whatever the subgrid is, and then this one's gonna be able to put it here and pop it subgrids or subgrid, like grids, hit the gritty. Okay, this, this is like generally a solution. I don't, I'm not too sure about this mod stuff. We have like this big thing, I think we just wanna break it into three by three, so we're definitely modding it by three, but this thing is not good. Let me, uh, for the product of array sums of self problem. All right, I'll check that out. I'll check that out. I'm gonna look up this math equation thing is, um, like convert 2D coordinates to 1D. So here, this should be fine. And so with this, it's row times the length of the row plus column. There's no way that's it. I could have sworn you have the modulus it. I don't think that's it. Treating a 1D as a 2D. I think it's this equation. I think it's this one. This is the one I was thinking of. I mod and then I divided, or like I mod and then J divided by or whatever. I think. It's like one of these, I feel like, but 
no, this is a, this is definitely one dimensional, two dimensional, and then this one is like I don't even I don't even think this is it. Hmm. This one was kind of annoying, just because you need this equation. If you, if you can't do the equation, then you're not just not going to be able to solve it. If you don't know what like this equation thing is. Then everything else, I'm like 90 percent, 99 percent sure it's good. And then uh, what'd you send me? A zombie. So you do output. What'd you just like straight like this is prefix, and then you keep track of the suffix. Yeah, yeah. I, I guess that makes sense. That makes sense. Like I mean, it's just like using the output array essentially. Like you're allowed to use at least one. So. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Bjergsen is just literally just I divided by. It's not mod, it's just divided. Like just purely like that. Okay, um, is it actually, is it actually this? It's just I times nine plus J. Is this it? Bro, I'm losing my mind. All right, let me look at this. Okay, according to the, it's I divided by three times three plus J divided by three. This is like something I just wouldn't know. I don't know how I would even like remember it. And apparently this is wrong. Oh, because I never add it, by the way. And then I could probably have just done this like two dimensional, maybe or something. I don't know. OK, so that was the problem is that I was I didn't have this dots thing. And I also like messed this up, but the, the I to the J. OK, so this code, I believe, works and you're good. Delete these. Submit. I don't know how I would remember this equation. I think I don't know how I would convert this, honestly, like dividing it by three and then multiplying by three. but. Yeah, that's a tricky one. Tricky equation, honestly. I feel like it's like math. More math than anything. But here's that set problem. What is up, Chan Do? Line 17, system math. How'd you come up with that? <laughs> yeah, I did not come up with it. I looked that up. Look that thing up. I do not know. How do you derive it though? I don't even I don't even know how you would derive this. Like, I mean I kind of get that, like, okay, you want what we want is we want like zeros. And we want to like, I guess like kind of if it goes out of bounds. We want to like you know reduce it but like it's super weird because you're multiplying by three again so i i really don't know i really don't know all i know is like i know it's a possible to take a two-dimensional coordinate and put it into a one-dimensional coordinate and then i know i can like look up stuff like that but even this one is like like this one's not really row times length of row plus column all right let's go into this i think it's the final one right valid uh consecutive sequence i also actually never i don't think i went over like the actual code okay so here's the code for this problem so we're going to go over, we're going to create the row set, column set, we're going to have a subgrid set for hashing. We're going to go through every single number, um, store or grab a number from the board. If it's a dot, then like we don't really care about it. Like if it's an empty space, we don't, we're not going to bother. But if it's a number, then we're going to check. Oh, have we seen this number before? Is number in this row at like that, you know, at that hash of that? And then we hash again, check if it's in the columns. And then here's the subgrid one. We can use a math equation to convert a two-dimensional grid of like, you know, row column into a one-dimensional space of, you know, just that index. And then we can just iterate through and um, do the same thing where we just check, is that, have we seen that in our subgrid? And we just add everything at the end. So yeah, this is the code for this. And that is all. I can't really talk too much about like how to actually derive this equation. I know that like, if you want to do two-dimensional, you'd multiply. Uh, you know, your row times like the number that you want to like peg it to, I guess, but then plus like the column, but I don't know sure why we're doing the division, but I think the core part of this is just that know that like two dimensional space and one dimensional space are, you know, can be converted. I think that's like a very big takeaway. And this will help you like Googling to get the solution or chat GPT or whatever, but all right. So that's that.